experience, Dr. Coles, what causes psychiatric disorders and how do you evaluate them? Well, in my experience, uh, long experience, ever since I worked at a mental institution 15 years ago, people who are labeled mentally ill, and these, are, these were institutionalized patients where I started out my experience in the psychiatry mm -hmm. uh, uh, industry, they were all victims of serious psychological trauma. At their roots, they were victims of abuse or sexual, physical, spiritual abuse, uh, physical violence, uh, deprivations, being in poverty, a, that kind poverty of cruel, cruelty. Cruelty in child rearing results in criminality or mental illness 100% of the time unless that person has somebody in their life, preferably an adult, that understands mm -hmm. that the person, that the kid was vic being victimized and not guilty or not the perpetrator. And, and otherwise, without any understanding on, uh, from some adult or some other person, that child is going to go down a path of criminality or mental ill health. Um, and so cruelty in child rearing is a massive one. So every kid that's been beaten or abused mm -hmm. or neglected or victim of incest um, is destined to have some problem unless there's some intervention. Uh, so in my experience, mental illness, so-called mm -hmm. mental illness, okay. I prefer calling it mental ill health because none of us are totally mentally uh, right. well, um, it is caused by trauma, psychological trauma, in any of a thousand different uh, ways. Okay. So in order to cure it or prevent it, and that, now if we know that there's a cause, then there's a way to prevent it. So that's how you evaluate it, you that's find out what the cause is. Find out what the cause is. And oftentimes, just in evaluating what the cause is, we do good therapy. Mm -hmm. People will say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not bipolar, or I'm, I don't have borderline personality disorder, like I've been told for years and mm -hmm. on these drugs because of that. I was just a victim. That's therapeutic just by itself to just go through that process of saying, hey, it wasn't your fault, you know. This isn't a mental illness that's genetic. This is an environmental or a cultural thing. You were a victim, and racism and, or poverty, those are mm -hmm. uh, institutionalized victimization um, by a, a culture, by a society, by a racist society can cause people then to go down that path of criminality or mental ill health. Um, so I, I think that this, you know, I, I read somewhere that 45% of Americans are mentally ill, or they have a label of mental illness. 45% of us, yeah. And I think it's probably true if you look at the diagnostic coding or what's on their computerized information, mm -hmm. the 45% the of us have been diagnosed as major depressive disorder, or chronic anxiety, or you know, some sort of thing like that. That's absurd. Um, <laughs> maybe America is crazy, and in some ways <laughs> it is, but. I think to say that we're, half of us are mentally ill is absurd. Mm -hmm. But that's the psychiatric industry and the pharmaceutical industry that fosters this labeling. Doctors have to put a label on something in order to get paid by insurance. There has to be a code number. So we have, in order for someone to come with us, with, we, have to, they, we have to diagnose them with something. And uh, if they're just complaining of sadness, well, then we label depression. Mm -hmm. So now that person goes in the computer as one of the 45% that's mentally ill because they have a mental illness label. That's, that's scandalous, you know. That's very alarming, <clears throat> too. And it's alarming, yeah. So, as going back to this, the question. Psychiatric disorders. Yeah, I think psychiatric disorders are preventable forms of violence that once, if you haven't done the prevention and you don't know the cause, then you're going to have that person go down uh, a, a, a path where they're going to be brain disabled by the drugs mm -hmm. and which may wind up with ultimate unemployability or lack of creativity or they're just not as good an employee as they could be uh, if they get on three or four or five drugs mm -hmm. and in raised doses it's more likely that they're going to be disabled a lot of people are working and they're only they're on one or two drugs and they're maybe struggling mm -hmm. but they may be able to handle you know handle employment but they're kind of vulnerable to being disabled because of the meds. Is it ever genetic? Mm -hmm. You know, the psychiatric industry has hypothesized that uh, that psychiatric disorders, so to speak, 
uh, are genetic. They say, well, it's maybe 60-40, 60% 60 mm -hmm. genetic, 40% environmental. There's no proof. They're still looking for a, a schizophrenia gene. They haven't found it. There's no <laughs> such thing. They're looking for an alcoholism gene, and they haven't found it. There's no such thing. They're looking for a violence gene. That's absurd, you know. Uh, I think that it's more if there's a genetic component, and, and certainly uh, what genes do, what our inheritance does, is we inherit uh, proteins, the genes that, that code for proteins, for enzymes. So the protein that makes our eyes blue is genetic, but that's an, an, uh, a protein <clears throat> that is inherited. The color of our skin is inherited. But the behaviors that cause us to be violent or uh, want us to drink to assuage our mental anguish or something like that, that's not genetic. What about before alcohol was invented or before mm -hmm. cigarettes were invented? Do you think there's a gene for cigarette addiction? <laughs> I mean, things are familial. You know, the okay. things run in families. No right. question about that. Alcoholism runs in families, but it's a catchy thing. It's kind of a contagious germ theory rather than a genetic theory. If you have an alcoholic grandfather, he might have beat his kids or neglected his kids. <clears throat> his kids are <clears throat> probably going <clears> to <throat> trend towards doing the same thing. It was acceptable, and so they find it's some modeling. relief. Modeling, yeah, modeling is a good way to put it. And then, and so it does run in families, but that doesn't mean it's genetic. You know, Lutheranism runs in families, you know? Is, is, does anyone say there's a Lutheran gene? Oh, that's absurd, you know? So we have to reassess that as being myth. It's plausible, so mm -hmm. if you say, if we say, you know, like, they say a lie often enough, people start believing it as truth, and so that's kind of what's happening in psychiatry. There's brain chemical disorder, brain chemical disorder, maybe, and the drugs correct the brain chemical disorder, et cetera, et cetera, and we get bombarded with this, and, and no, you never hear the alternative view. There's no fair and balanced reporting mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. this area, okay. and so people don't know what else to believe, and they believe what they're told. So yeah. you're saying that it's not genetic? Right. Yeah, I think that the it's proof of trauma. being genetic, it's, it's environmental or the whole, the culture, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the food supply, the entertainment, the, mm -hmm. tox the toxins in entertainment or toxins in food or toxins wherever are what affect our whole human being. Holistic medicine is about evaluating and, and treating the whole human person, the spiritual side of people, et cetera, it must be addressed. So how I evaluate uh, mental ill health, uh, I spend a lot of time with patients. Uh, the first patient visit, I, sp I take 90 minutes, and, and that's probably even too short um, mm -hmm. to really get a, uh, an idea of what that person has gone through from prenatal times to mm -hmm. infancy to toddlerhood to childhood adulthood, and uh, all the things that are factors there, including diet and toxins and how, how much cruelty there was in the family home. Uh, what were the spiritual mm -hmm. uh, traumas that they may have endured? Um, and, and then you, then almost always, I find out that there's trauma that then has gone down some sort of path. You know, the rape at age 16 has a lot to do with the depression mm -hmm. at age 40. You need to ask questions about all of that to find out what's the most likely uh, root of the issue. So I think it's just a matter of taking a lot of time with patients. I think these psychiatric evaluations that can spend four mm -hmm. hours doing these formal ones where there's IQ mm -hmm. testing, right. I think there's a lot to be said for that. They, you know, there's a lot of questions that uh, are asked and answers emerge. And so I th but I don't think it takes that, it shouldn't have to take that much time. I think if you ask about the, the psychological trauma and uh, the drugs that were used and mm -hmm. nutritional deficiencies, et cetera, um, then you can get a pretty good idea that it's a post-traumatic stress disorder induced depression or insomnia or nightmare disorder mm -hmm. uh, or guilt or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a very therapeutic thing for patients, as I've mentioned before. They say, oh, it wasn't my fault. You know, I was an abuse victim. And okay. all this time, uh, um, people have been blaming me. And, mm -hmm. and so there's something therapeutic about getting that history clear. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.